Ever heard of hallucinogenic or mad honey? The first recorded report about the mad honey comes from a famous Greek warrior and historian, Xenophon of Athens, who in 401 BCE was returning home with the Greek army along the shores of the Black Sea, now modern Turkey, after the battles with the Persians. Xenophon wrote that after his fellow Greek soldiers feasted on local honey, they were like people exceedingly drunk, while those who had eaten a great deal seemed like crazy or even in some cases dying men. The honey produced from the nectar of flowering rhododendrons that are especially abundant along the shores of the Black Sea contains gryanotoxin. It's a neurotoxin that can cause intoxication characterized by dizziness, hypertension, and vivid hallucinations. Although Xenophon's soldiers had eventually recovered and escaped unharmed, over 300 years later, when the Roman soldiers, led by Pompey the Great, were passing through the same area, they were not as fortunate. In 67 BCE, the Roman army, led by Pompey the Great, was chasing the Persian army of King Mithridates of Pontus along the Black Sea coast. Retreating Persians left many honey jars of the same sweet by psychoactive honey. After the Romans feasted on that honey and were similarly incapacitated, 1,000 Roman soldiers were ambushed and massacred. While neurotoxins in honey are relatively rare, as they can be avoided by not having any rhododendrons, azaleas, and mountain laurels within a mile of the apiaries, there's a lot of commercial honey containing hard-to-avoid harmful substances like pesticides, herbicides, and fungicides. A large Swiss university study of hundreds of honey samples around the world found that pesticides commonly used to boost crop yield occur in 75% of the studied commercial honey samples. A Danish study found dangerously elevated levels of herbicides in honey and pollen from beehives next to 20 conventional agricultural fields. And the USDA study found elevated levels of pesticides and chemical residue from beehive treatments in conventionally managed apiaries. Chronic long-term health effects from pesticide and herbicide exposure include cancer, brain and nervous system damage, birth defects, infertility, damage to the liver, kidneys, lungs, etc. So when you think you're getting your standard local raw honey, what you could be really getting is this. Or this. There is a way to avoid getting honey with elevated levels of pesticides, herbicides, and fungicides. First, forget large conventional apiaries. Second, find out where your local apiary is located. Should not be within two miles of conventional agricultural fields. Third, make sure that the apiary does not use conventional chemical treatments for honeybees. There's one more important issue with the commercial honey, and here I need to tell you one beekeeper's secret. When I was 12, my grandmother and I happened to be guests of honor at a beekeeper's house, and I still remember the taste of their absolutely delicious honey. The beekeeper told us a secret why that honey was really exceptional. She said it came from two hives that were intended for their family only, and that we were treated as family. The beekeeper also said that when she sells her honey at a farmer's market, it comes from the rest of her hives, where she feeds her bees with sugar, which increases her honey yield by the amount of sugar she feeds. In his influential book on natural beekeeping, Keeping Bees with a Smile, Lazudin suggests that to avoid supplemental feedings, each bee colony needs a good, clean, natural forageable area with at least an acre of spring to fall rich nectar resources far away from any conventional agricultural fields that are filled with pesticides and herbicides. Most beekeepers don't have the luxury of having such vast amount of clean unpolluted land with rich nectar resources far away from conventional agricultural fields. And that's why sugar feeding is rampant and that's why conventional honey tastes mediocre.
Natural beekeepers do not feed the bees with sugar syrup at all. There's not enough nutrients in sugar. Too much sugar is as bad for the bees as it is for people. Just like you can taste and appreciate good wine, you can also taste and appreciate good natural unpolluted raw honey. This was the first early summer honey sample from Forest Beehive that those who tasted it described as incredible and joyful. It is a light, amber, sweet and very floral honey where you can almost taste individual flowers.